Now on this episode of China Uncensored, crippled petitioner blows himself up at Chinese airport. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your watermelon vendor, Chris Chappell. You know, it's ironic that the Communist Party established the People's Republic of China because it certainly isn't a republic and by no means does it represent the people of China. That could be why more and more the Chinese people are becoming increasingly vocal about their distaste for the party and how it rules China. I have some 2009 figures from the PLAC, that's the massively powerful and shadowy internal security apparatus called the Political and Legislative Affairs Committee. Guess how many mass protests China had that year alone? 500? Nope, more. 2,000. 50,000. It was way higher, actually. 230,000 mass incidents, as they call it, in one year. That's more than 600 protests each day by Chinese people who are angry with the authorities. The New York Times said last year that these demonstrations or riots against corrupt local party authorities are often put down by force. That's an awful lot of angry and frustrated Chinese people with very little recourse for how they're being treated. That's why at the beginning of July, the Chinese regime tried something a little different. They created an online petition site. It's meant to make it easier for people to file complaints against the government. It crashed the first morning. Servers got too many petitions. Now, for centuries, people have been allowed to go to Beijing to petition even directly to the emperor. Of course, some local officials would try to prevent petitioners from getting there. And after the Chinese regime started to punish local governments for having too many petitioners and reward them when there were fewer, those local officials made sure to stop as many petitioners as they can from reaching Beijing. Petitioners are routinely rounded up, arrested, and harassed, often beaten. And usually when they do manage to get their petition submitted, they don't hear anything back. That's driven a lot of people to desperation. That's what happened just recently with 34-year-old Ji Zhongxing at the Beijing Capital International Airport. That's him in the wheelchair, and that's him blowing himself up. He's not dead, only injured. In fact, he was the only one injured primarily because he warned everyone to get away before setting off the explosive device, which was something akin to fireworks, according to state-run Xinhua News Agency. The airport didn't even delay flights because of it. Talk about not getting your voice heard. Ji is originally from eastern China. When he was about 26, he claims he was attacked by Cheng Guang in southern Guangdong province when he worked as a motorcycle taxi service. He said that Cheng Guang knocked him off his motorcycle and brutally beat him, though they say he just fell off his bike. He was left paralyzed from the attack and had been petitioning for compensation since. If you don't know what a Cheng Guang is, here's a fun video of them fulfilling their duty of managing street vendors. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure G just fell off his bike. And guess what? G's explosive outburst came just a few days after a watermelon vendor was murdered by Cheng Guang. The watermelon vendor was 56-year-old Deng Zhengjia. Cheng Guang destroyed his melons, beat him, and delivered the finishing blow with one of his own sliding measurement weights to his head. His wife was there to watch. That's the exact same thing that happened in 2011 to another fruit vendor named Deng Qiguo, beaten to death by Cheng Guang. And so you have a lot of people getting very angry that Chinese authorities get to beat and kill people and yet seem to manage to get away with it. And that's why in cases like Ji Zhongxing, people are siding with the guy with the bomb instead of calling them terrorists like people do with Timothy McVeigh. That should tell you something's very rotten in China. And Ji hasn't been the only petitioner to blow themselves up when they became desperate. The same thing happened last year with a guy named Chu Huangqiang. He was also a petitioner who had been paralyzed, this time in a work-related accident. After years of petitioning for compensation and getting nowhere, he blew himself up at a government building, killing himself and injuring six officials. People weren't too concerned about the officials, but Chu was called a hero. Which then brings us to a very interesting idea, the right to revolution. It's a political philosophy that says it's the right or duty of the people of a nation to overthrow a government that acts against the best interests of the people. Guess which country was the first to codify that theory? The United States? France? China! 
Over 3,000 years ago, the founders of the Zhou Dynasty overthrew the previous rulers of the Shang Dynasty and created a concept that would be used throughout Chinese history, the Mandate of Heaven. Tian, that's the character for heaven, chooses just rulers, and when rulers become corrupt, the Mandate of Heaven moves on. If someone is able to overthrow the old regime, that means the Mandate of Heaven has passed to them. With all these mass incident protests and individuals taking desperate measures to protest against authorities, it would appear to me that the Communist Party might just be the most recent bad emperor. So what do you think is in store for China, the Chinese people, and the Chinese Communist Party? Will these outbursts remain isolated incidents, or could something bigger be brewing? Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. You can check out China Uncensored's Twitter or Facebook account for more. I'm Chris Chappell. See you tomorrow with another new episode.